additional allocation bill number 2023. This is a very important bill, uh, Mr. Speaker. Important in the sense that this bill is a child of the Senate. I say so, Mr. Speaker, because those that have served long enough in the Budget and Finance Committee know that before there was even something called condition and unconditional grant, Mr. Speaker, many county governments would additionally receive resources through various schemes and policies of the national government without due regard to any procedure, reference to any committee of the Senate, and therefore, at Budget and Finance Committee, Mr. Speaker, we began to raise concerns about the increasing number of allocations that were being sent to county governments, small amounts as they began, 2 billion, 3 billion. But subsequently, when we realized the figures were growing over and above uh, tens of billions, then as Senate, we raised concerns about the need to have a formula and establish mechanism through which any additional funds that goes to our counties are determined and the assurance thereof that there is no system or systemic process in which other counties were being uh, uh, marginalized, Mr. Speaker, because this house serves to protect the interests of counties and their governments. And therefore, after years of hoggling about this conversation, Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Budget and Finance developed this mechanism. Number one, the formula through which first you make the determination of what is conditional, what is unconditional, and the spread out of how each con uh, county benefits. And the same will be evidence in the bill, uh, Mr. Speaker. And if you read through the schedules, the first, second, third, you will see that counties, for example, that don't have minerals, uh, or at least, I don't believe no county doesn't have minerals, Mr. Speaker, but counties that haven't exploited their mineral activities don't benefit, for example, under Schedule 3 in the mineral uh, collections, and so on and so forth, Mr. Speaker. Many other things. I listened to uh, the senator who contributed before me speak on the issue of fines and the same. So this bill is a brainchild of the Senate, uh, Mr. Speaker, after rigorous work and thoughts of colleague senators on what we need to do, have a determined formula and ways in which you send additional resources to our counties, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I am happy and proud that this House has made a significant contribution in entrenching and furthering devolution as one of the great tenants why this House exists. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we have this bill that is before us that sets out the formula and uh, the determination of all these proceeds of loans and grants and up from development partners and other government programs, Mr. Speaker, that the national government is running in collaboration with the county government. I must commend this administration for one thing, Mr. Speaker. I hear people uh, not appreciate and celebrate, but it has taken this administration Mr. Speaker, to finally unlock the constitutional dictates of Article, should be 189 if I don't uh, get it right, uh, but on the cooperation between county and national governments, uh, Mr. Speaker. Many of the times that there are programs that were being run, uh, run uh, Mr. Speaker, the least medical equipment is one such example, and it's part of the uh, funds that are on this schedule, Mr. Speaker, where decisions on procurement, allocation, determination of who deserves what, were all concluded here in Nairobi with minimal or no uh, regard, Mr. Speaker, to our county governments. But take an example, take a look, Mr. Speaker, at, for example, this uh, fertilizer subsidy program, Mr. Speaker, and the coordination and the agreement, putting it in schedule, matching, Mr. Speaker, I hear many people sometimes argue and say, oh, we see so much resources sometimes remain at Ministry of Agriculture. If we continue the way this bill is structured, Mr. Speaker, then very soon such conversations will be things of the past because much as you want to centralize certain things on policy, for example, Mr. Speaker, would it make sense 
despite the fact that many people, especially our colleagues from the minority side, may not like to see any coin remain with the national government for obvious reasons, would it make sense, for example, Mr. Speaker, for each county to be left on their own to import their own fertilizer? Or you'd rather centralize it, have test and standards, and determination of what is due? If you read through the schedule, Mr. Speaker, you will see that based on the 2019 census, each household, farming household, uh, household unit per county is listed, and there is a weight to it. And that weight is the factor which informs how much uh, bags of fertilizer are due to a particular county, and the resources follow the same, Mr. Speaker. Because if it was left uh, to be procured otherwise, Mr. Speaker, it will be called costly for the simple reason of economies of scale. It makes more sense to place a more significant order. I mean, that's a no-brainer, uh, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I like the spirit that is in the bill of cooperation between national and county governments where it makes sense, where it's more affordable, uh, Mr. Speaker, where it actually gives better advantage to the people that we represent, Mr. Speaker, because sometimes we tend to blur the lines and forget that at the end of the day, there's only one taxpayer. And he doesn't have two pockets from which he pays one to the county and another to the national government. When they pay taxes, they expect that us, especially we that serve in parliament, Mr. Speaker, will have the financial discipline to determine for them what is in the best and most prudent way that they can get uh, services uh, closer to themselves, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I like the proposals that are in the bill up to and including the reporting mechanisms that have been put in place. And this is a new uh, model, Mr. Speaker, of drafting our bills, which I want members to uh, take note and be cognizant of, especially you that serve in our committees. Many times you consider bills and we give a lot of responsibilities to cabinet secretaries without demanding that they come back to this house with a reporting mechanism on how they are executing those responsibilities that we've given unto them. I like, Mr. Speaker, that in this bill it is proposed and shall be the case that on the 15th of every month, this house will be furnished with reports, Mr. Speaker, of how much uh, resources under this conditional or additional location, Mr. Speaker, have been sent to our counties. That's a very important uh, tenet, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, there is a very good culture that is long lost in this house, which I want, and I have drafted a letter to the uh, control of budget, because I feel as senators... We are not making the best use of that particular office. Previously, Mr. Speaker, when you went to the Senator's Lounge, you'd find many a times there was a huge pile of books about expenditure in our various counties and exchequer releases and whatnot, all those uh, details that it will take for you as a Senator to understand the financial operations of your own county government, uh, Mr. Speaker. But that culture has since disappeared. Hardly do you ever find those books. Many colleagues... I'm sad to say, will struggle to tell you what was the last disbursement that went to their counties. Yet these are figures and statistics that will help you appreciate as a senator whether your governor is being prudent with the resources that you fight so hard to ensure that they go to our counties, Mr. Speaker. In fact, when we later interact with the controller of budget, and I want us to invite her to this house, Mr. Speaker, so that we take her to task on the various issues that are happening in our various counties, because you can actually control, Mr. Speaker, financial property in our counties, including who gets paid, for what services, at what time, using the officer, offices of a control of budget, Mr. Speaker, so that we are not just reduced to morticians, Mr. Speaker, of waiting for the results from the Auditor General at the end of a financial year to say, oh, what happened, this and the other. We want our reports promptly. And nothing stops her. In fact, when we eventually meet her, Mr. Speaker, we will demand that she does not even have to print those long, expensive copies. We are talking about austerity measures in our government, Mr. Speaker. Let us send even me that statement of Kericho County Government Operation to my WhatsApp. I have no business demanding that it be in hard copy. I'm the only senator of Kericho after all. So what is the problem? They know me. They know my number. Let me have that report in a prompt manner without any due consideration to so much protocols about uh, government so that I know how much is being released, how is, this, is it being spent. In fact, yesterday, Mr. Speaker, or two days ago, at the National Dialogue Committee, COG came and appeared before us, and I took them to task 
because I have another report which I'll be sharing with members in the next coming one or two weeks. Do you know, members, that all our 47 county governments are in violation of Schedule 25 of our regulations on, on uh, uh, expenditure in our county governments? There is not a single county that is spending more than 20% on development spend. All of them 15%, 16 and we're just seated here as Senate. We must demand when control of budget comes here. Because I have invited her and I've told her that you must appear before a committee of the whole for the entire Senate. Because Senators want to know, why are you allowing counties to spend over and above uh, uh, what is it called? Legislative uh, determinations that have already been meant. The 70-30 principle. That principle was put there to ensure. We know very well that the easiest way with which you can peel for resources is through recurrent expenditure. Because it's small things like fuel, I don't know, printing, paying so and so, and all these funny, funny programs that county government, uh, governors are running. You find a governor running, I don't know, with mattresses and uh, what not, chicken, the way Senator Karunga was talking about, and a recurrent vote, saying I have brought this donation. That's why very few of them, actually, that's why none of them is at 35%. Very few are above uh, 25%. Most of them, for your information, sadly, Senator, are below 20%. And this is a worrying trend which is, we must begin to question as Senate. We must demand from control of budget and ask, what is it that my county, Kericho, your county, Senator Osozi, and the rest, Senator Betty, determine and let your governor appear before us and file a recovery plan. Because I believe the reason why, for example, the national government is in the financial and debt distress that we find ourselves in as a country is because of managing our resources the way counties are beginning to operate. Where you imagine that so long as this is government, somehow money will always be found. You don't want to run it prudently, knowing that resources are finite, that somehow they must have an end. Senator Karungo Dango have just spoken about how many of our counties continuously inflate their own source revenue with a simple motivation of growing their development budget so that at the end of it they can procure take the 10% and never pay those contractors. There is absolutely nobody in their right mind right now, Mr. Speaker, in this country who can seek to be a county contractor unless the governor is your father, your mother, your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Otherwise, any ordinary contractor knows the minute you conclude that job, you begin an even more difficult job of trying to get paid. Yes. And many of the times they'll never be paid. Sure. People have been auctioned. As a Senate, Mr. Speaker, these are the things that we need to interact with and rise above. I believe our job is not just legislating and passing laws and passing such uh, beautiful pieces of legislation, Mr. Speaker. We must follow like a good CEO. And I said another time, Mr. Speaker, that a senator is like the chairman of a board and the governor is a CEO. Oversight responsibility is on us to ensure that your, senate, your governor present the financial report of how the company, otherwise known as a county government, performed in that particular financial year. How did they use the resources that were sent to them? How much did they ensure that they brought services proximate to the people, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker? Many other times, if you take time to read through, take time and understand what is your governor doing? Where are these resources disappearing to? Why is it that when you move around your county, they, these pundits levels are on an all-time high. People still speaking about lack of basic amenities, no drugs in our facilities. All the roads that were built between 2013 and now, none is being maintained, Mr. Speaker. And we'll soon get to a point where our people will give up and say, we thought this was coming to save us. It is even worse than when things were centralized at the national government, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, I hope at that session, when we interact with the control of budget, and we will send a notice, Mr. Speaker, so that all the senators can appear during that particular meeting. In fact, my proposal, Mr. Speaker, is that let it be a committee of the whole so that we share our frustration and our disappointment with that particular uh, office, including, uh, Mr. Speaker, the difficulties why also 
Many counties are not able to access their resources sometimes sent to them. Because I've listened to governors also sometimes who say that to access, the reason why many governors are able to access those resources in an easy manner is that they part with something. And those that don't give are frustrated and have to wait for months and services are delaying, Mr. Speaker. And the minute they know that the minute you pay, then nobody asks you. It is a demand of us as a Senate that when a county government presents, for example, its list of supplies and people to be paid for services that they have offered, that there shall be no alteration. And if there is to be an alteration, then it is with the authority of the control of budget. Therefore, I look forward to that particular uh, meeting, uh, Mr. Speaker. Otherwise, I celebrate the spirit and the and genuinity that is in this particular bill and the various uh, programs and proposals. Members take time to read, understand. We need to bring to a close, for example, this issue of the five counties uh, that we began. Senator Boni Alwale was in the Senate, served with him in, the, in, the, in that particular committee when he allocated resources for five counties that were never district headquarters to go and build their county headquarters. He went on leave for a good five years. He is back. We are still giving resources to those five counties. We need to bring this to a close, Mr. Speaker, and so many other uh, programs that are listed here because it doesn't make financial sense for us to continue uh, to disperse uh, the same, Mr. Speaker. And like I said lastly, Mr. Speaker, I like the fact that each segregated category points out you to your performance of your county. If you are not, I believe every part of this county, there is something they can mine. But if you have not exploited your mining potential, then don't expect anything on Schedule 3. That's why if you go to Schedule 3 under uh, uh, minerals, uh, Mr. Speaker, of the, of the bill, I think almost 20 counties, mine included, are on zero because w what can you be given if you have not brought or made any contribution? I expect maybe Kwale will be leading. I don't know, uh, Mr. Speaker. Senator uh, Chimera is here and will we'll look it out for us and uh, what has been the contribution because of the mining activities and so many others. Even Senator Boni, challenge your people. I saw yesterday in cabinet they, they allowed artisan miners to continue to ply their trade. You know those people who come with a uh, karai and shake water and say, oh, there's some gold. I don't know how gold is called in uh, Kiluya, Mr. Speaker. But we must move our people from that kind of mining practice and see what possibilities. I know they had closed actually the issue of issuing uh, mining licenses. And I saw in the dispatch of cabinet yesterday that that has now since been uh, opened. I'm sure if Senator uh, Boni Halwale was to exploit on that potential, uh, there will be a bigger contribution to their column under Kakamega than what is uh, on, the, on that uh, column. And so on and so forth, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, I support this bill, uh, Mr. Speaker, and hope that we can conclude on it speedily so that these resources can be released to the, our counties. With those bent remarks, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Thank you so much.